In previous videos, we have seen what are the different kind of Docker volumes and how does it work. In this video, I am going to show you an example how exactly do we use in the real world. With this demonstration, you can clearly understand importance of the Docker volumes, how does it store the data. To demonstrate this example, I am going to create a Jenkins container. While creating our container, we are going to use a named volume. So, Whenever we use named volume, it is going to create volumes under varlib docker volumes, right? This will get mapped to in our Jenkins server var Jenkins home. Then we'll configure our Jenkins server and create one or two jobs. Then we'll delete this container. Even though we delete, our jobs related information is stored over here. Then we'll create a new container. If I attach this volume to new container, we could able to see the content which we have created or jobs which we created in the previous Jenkins server. That is one demonstration. Similar way, we are going to use bind volumes or host volumes. In this case, we are going to use opt docker Jenkins. Okay, this is the directory we are going to create and we'll associate this one with the var Jenkins home. We'll create a new Jenkins container parallelly to use the same directory so that if I create one Jenkins job over here, same we could able to see in the other container as well. That is what we are going to demonstrate. This procedure I have updated in my GitHub repository. Let's go and have a look. This is my GitHub repository. I have updated document over here. If you see, managing data is necessary for the stateful applications even the container is deleted. So in this demonstration, we are going to do that one. First, what do we do? We can create a Jenkins container. This is the command to create a Jenkins container. Don't get confused. How do I get this command? We will just go to hub.docker.com and search for the Jenkins image. You can find this command. So Jenkins, if I search for Jenkins, you can see here Jenkins. This is the official image. And if you scroll down, how to use this image. Here we have instructions. So to create without any volume, this is the command. We need to expose port number 8080 as well as 50,000. Next, with volume, this is the host volume we are using or bind volume. So this is how we can use it. This is anonymous volume we are not using. But in our case, we are trying with this command. Instead of bind volumes, we are going to use named volume. So same command I have updated over here. If you see docker run minus minus name, I'm giving name for our container. So container name is Velaxi Technologies Jenkins Production 01 system minus P. This is to expose our ports. Okay, two ports we are exposing. Then V, V stands for volume. This is where we are creating a volume. You can see here, this is the volume. This is the folder inside the container where this volume is mapped. Then Jenkins image. We are not providing any tag. It means that it is going to take the latest version of Jenkins. So this we need to execute. Before executing, let's go and check our Docker host. This is our Docker host, right? So host name, Docker host. Just I'm changing the host name so that it is easy for us to recognize. So Docker host, let me clear the screen. And Docker PS minus A, no containers are there. Docker images. No images are there. Docker volume ls. Few volumes are there. I am deleting all these volumes. Docker. So I am deleting all these volumes. Docker volume ls. So we don't have any volumes at this moment. Our Docker host is clean. Now let's create our Jenkins system. Docker run is a command to create a container. It will pull the image from the hub.docker.com that is Jenkins image and create a container because we don't have this image locally. So you can see here it is pulling Jenkins latest image. It takes a while. All right, our Jenkins container has been created and it is up and running. Now this is the password to log into our Jenkins container and uh, also we can find the same password over here. So I need to log into my Jenkins console now. I am going to take the IP address of our EC2 instance. So this is Docker host. This is where I have installed the Linux server. So take the public IP and 
it runs on 8080 anyway we have exposed same port so let's execute all right this is jenkins and we can find the password over here anyway the password is already available okay we have copied it right okay i haven't used dt or it flag that is the reason you could struck up in this space all right let it be and i am giving the password okay i don't want to install any plugins because this is for demonstration so i just closed it and start using jenkins that's it our jenkins is up and running now before creating a job i will open new window duplicate tab and again login as a root user increase the font size clear the screen docker ps minus a if i see one container has been created that is using jenkins image and this is the container name and these ports has been exposed okay next docker images if you see okay jenkins image has been pulled to create this container then docker volume ls you can see a volume has been created this is the volume and if I give docker inspect volume name, it will show you when it was created and where exactly does it store the data. You can see here where lib docker volumes and uh, with the volume name one folder has been created then underscore data. Now we are going to create a job. So new item, I am giving hello world and it is a freestyle project. And I am going to execute a shell command because this is not the demonstration about Jenkins. That is the reason. Just echo hello world. Okay. So save it. And let's run it. Just we are going to create some data so that this data gets stored under our volume. So two jobs we have executed. And if I go back okay one job we have and also i can create one more new job test job this is also freestyle same i am doing echo all right we have created two jobs and also i am executing this one as well okay so we have two jobs now what we are going to do is we are going to delete this container to delete this container we need to save this password first why because we are going to get the same password again what i am going to do here is cat greater than sorry greater than i am just storing our password over here on our docker host now i am going to come out of from this container so if i give control c it is going to stop our jenkins system now if i go and check docker ps minus a you can see our container has been exited nothing but it got stopped if i try to access it it doesn't work okay now i am deleting this one docker rm container id or container name so i am using container name and clear the screen and if i check for the containers there is no containers at all if i check for volumes you can see our volume is still exist and if I search for our job name, like find slash minus name hello, hello world, it should be available under our volume. You can see here, similar way, if I try to find out for our test job, test job, you can see here it is available. Now we are going to create Jenkins container again, but while creating, we will attach this volume to that container. So for that, we have already a command you can see here this is the command so docker run minus d i am creating this time prod 02 instead of prod 01 at the same time you can see here port numbers also i am changing so that we can see the differences and volume name is same we should not change the volume name we must use the same volume name so let me type this command that is docker run minus minus name followed by our jenkins host name that is 0 to and this time i will give with minus dt option nothing but detached terminal then 
we need to expose our port. Let me grab the port numbers. So I'm exposing on port number 8090. Then we need to use the same volume. We are not going to use different volume. Then it should be mapped with slash where Jenkins home. So let me grab that as well to avoid typo and followed by Jenkins, right? So this is how we are going to create our Jenkins server. Now let's see. Our container has been created, docker ps a. Our container is up and running. Now we'll try to access this one from the browser on port number 8090. So 8090. Now you can see here, we could able to connect to our Jenkins and we should use our previous Jenkins server password. Why? Because we are just using the same disk. That's the reason it loaded from the same disk. Now password I have kept in my password file. Just copy this one and login. Alright, you can see we have two jobs which we have created. It is 16 minutes ago and 15 minutes ago. And if I go inside to this one, you can see two builds are there. This is how we can keep our data even though we delete our container. Maybe I am using it for Jenkins, but in the real world cases, we are going to use for database containers. Why? Because the data which we store in the databases is more important for any business. So far, we have used named volumes. Now we are going to use bind volumes. So this is also I have updated in my document that is using host volumes or bind volumes. We need to create a separate directory. Okay, either under OPT or some other location we can create. Once it is created, we need to create a container out of it. Okay, if we create a container out of it, whatever data we store or we create, it gets stored over the directory which we have created. Let's try that one. Now, this time I am going to create a new container. Before creating a container, I will create a folder. Even though you don't create a folder, it is going to create by default while executing our command. But we should give enough permissions. That's the reason I am creating it manually. So, mkdir slash opt folder name as a Jenkins wall. Nothing but volume. So, our directory has been created and we should give 777 permission on this directory. Otherwise, our container cannot able to use this volume. Let me change the permission ch mode triple seven on Jenkins wall. That's it. Now let's create our container. Clear the screen. Docker run minus dt in detached mode minus minus name and container name that is Velaxi Technologies Jenkins prod 03 I am giving. Then minus p port number we are going to expose it on 8099. And internally it runs on 8080. Similar way, another port number we are going to expose it on 56000. And internally it runs on 50000. Because these two ports we need to expose if we are creating Jenkins on a container. If it is in Jenkins, usually we don't use this port. Okay, next volume. So slash opt Jenkins volume. This is the one we are going to use it, right? And colon. And we need to map with our Jenkins home, right? So just to avoid confusion, I'm just copying it so that there won't be any typo and Jenkins. Let's create it. Our container has been created under Docker PS minus A if I give. Our container is up and running. Now let me access it on port number 8090. So this is our previous one, but it is still running. 8099. Okay, our new Jenkins server is getting ready. I need to get the password for this one from this file on our container. So let's go inside to our container docker exec. Okay, this is the command to go inside a container. Then minus it followed by container name slash bin bash. And let me open the file. Control C. And this is the password to log into our Jenkins container. 
Okay, it is a fresh system because we are using bind volumes over here and start Jenkins. That's it. This is how we can do. And if I go and check, sorry, outside of container, right? So let me just exit. And if I go to slash opt Jenkins volume, and you can see the content which is used by your Jenkins system. Same content you can see inside your Jenkins as well under slash bar Jenkins home. Okay. Now assume that I want to share this data with another container, then I can use this folder to create another container. Like I want to maintain the high availability of Jenkins containers. Then what we can do, we can create one more container, something like this. Okay. And uh, this time I don't use the port number 8099. I need to use another port number colon 8080 then 56666 okay just we are giving some other random port and it should use the same thing okay now we have created one more container to use that one and this time i will access it on 808091 so 8091 you can see another container has been created and we should use the same password which we used for this container let me use it admin and password is this one okay now even though if i create a job in one container it automatically reflect on the another container why because it is high availability usually we don't use two different ip addresses we will attach this one to your load balancer that is where docker spam or kubernetes comes into the picture so just for testing purpose i am going to create a test job one okay just if i create it and I'm not giving any information, just I created a job. It is an empty job. And if I refresh over here, oops, let me restart my Jenkins. Okay, if I restart, I should be able to see the content which I have created in the other Docker host. So let me copy the password. Yes, you can see new job is available over here as well. But usually, as I said, we are going to use load balancer to manage this one rather than using two different port numbers. That's all for this lecture. Thanks for watching. If you like our demonstration and if you feel that this content is useful for your friends and colleagues, please share with them. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done that. Thank you and see you again.